So I am so, so beyond excited to dive into this field of illumination, playful presence, and delightful depth. Who is my friend, Seth? Hi, Seth. Hello, Katerina. Thank you. How would I describe Seth? I'm just going to show you. I'm going to show you this (laughs) white heart. And if you're listening to the podcast, because this is going to be both an audio podcast and the video um, podcast. This is how we describe self consciousness. Is an incredible leader. He is an entrepreneur. He is a father. And I'm just going to introduce you my style, and then I'm going to ask oh, okay. you to weave. <laughs> and he's a phenomenal writer who wrote a book, um, "Flight to Enlight." And when I was reading your book in awe of your writing abilities, the way you weave the storytelling and vulnerability and the depth. And so just deep respect because I am birthing the book right now and it's quite an adventure, (laughs) right? And you said something, um, you said initiation through the heart is the only way to win. And it's right on your front cover. And um, I'm just like in awe because this is this is the message that I feel we both um, we both stand deep in is this wisdom of the heart that comes to us from ancient traditions and that is so relevant in the times right now. And we wanted to, we were kind of like, before we got on this conversation, we were plant, planting seeds about diving in a topic of cultivating, establishing and cultivating the field of coherence, the field of harmony and presence. And, um, but, you know, every time I turn on the camera and I step into the field with, uh, with, a, with a dear friend of mine, I just surrender to the current and I want to hear what's emerging for you. I want to hear uh, what is the deeper message that you are feeling called to express and, and just to catch up with you. You know, it's been, it's been a while since we connected. So I'm just going to start there. Hi. Hello, my gosh. Thank you so much. And yeah, I mean, everything you said is so pertinent for these times because you know, here we are, a species witnessing something that has never been witnessed before, as far as we can tell, in that it's systemic. The entire globe is somehow involved or part of this crazy thing that's happening around the world right now. And most are in a very fear-based place because suddenly they're like, the rug has been pulled from underneath their feet. But when you look at that, it's like, okay, the way of life that everybody wants to go back to isn't a way of life that was in harmony. Other words, coherence with nature, with reality, with our own well-being for the most part. We've all been part of something. Now, yes, big corporations and all that. I'm going to speak from a separatist perspective because as you and I both know well, and you know very well, that's why I'm super excited about this conversation. There's a few different ways you can look at this. You know, most people are looking at reality through the lens of I'm me, you're you. This is like everything's separate and that they are a person alone in space and time separated from everybody and everything. But then there's another way where you open up, up your focus and you realize that you're not just who you think you are. You are whatever this energy that's causing the heart to be is. And when you train yourself or condition yourself or allow yourself to be influenced by this, and we'll get into it deep, then suddenly you realize there is no separation. There's actually only full blown connection with everybody and everything. And the more we intentionally choose to perceive reality in that way, the more we can bring in a level of frequency that affects the external environment, right? (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, yeah, that's the kind of conversation that is so stimulating for my spiritual senses, for my physical senses. That's exactly it, Seth. That's exactly it. 
It's, it's the shift of identification, right? With this bigger, you know, the moment it dropped in for me, that collective is my larger body. Yeah. yeah. There was like this, an element of like, holy, wow, that is a huge realization, right? And then there is a great sense of, you know, liberation, cohesiveness and beauty and unity. Yeah. I, you said a very, very important word, identification. And when you want to look at the root of why so many people are stuck in fear, why they're so afraid or why they just can't take their attention away from their phone or their computer. Everyone's just like, I'm in my, look, I'm on my cell. I'm in my cell. I'm on my cell phone. My, like they're in a prison, right? Everybody's doing it because we have so incessantly over-identified with what we think is happening around us that we've ascribed all kinds of meaning and value to all these external things, forgetting that the most valuable thing we have is our awareness itself, which is actually priceless, right? And so as we reel it back in, just calm down, breathe rhythmically, get into this place of calm, we realize that whatever we give our attention to, we are actually fueling that to become more powerful, right? And look at how relevant this is when you, okay, from a separatist perspective, like us and them, like we know ultimately there is no them or us or us or them. They are us and we are them. And at the higher, higher levels of soul, there's a deep, these are unresolved aspects of our soul that we are attempting to evolve through, to integrate into real time. But if we're not doing that, then we're stuck in here and we're taking our attention and we're investing it in all these fear-based things. And we're giving those things more power. We're taking this infinite priceless power that's inside of us that is magnificent beyond anything words could describe. And we're putting it into something that makes us afraid, right? And then the feedback is we feel more fear and then we keep giving our attention back to it because it's like, oh, what's gonna happen? And when you have millions or even billions of people doing this, suddenly it's become normalized and everybody thinks it's normal. <laughs> and my point is like, okay, Everybody's focused on what they think is happening based upon all this media and propaganda and all that. But when I look up into the stars at night or I look down onto the earth and I look at just a little tiny ecosystem, realizing that it's connected by countless ecosystems and that we as these beings that we are, are on a living rock floating amidst a sea of stars in an ocean of infinity, then it's like, wait a minute, what are we focusing on? You know, because when I focus on that, not just out there, but when I focus on that in me, this energy that's causing my heart to beat, it's causing my lungs to breathe, it's causing all these things to happen. When I really take my attention and keep focusing on that with love, with appreciation, with gratitude, and just so grateful to even be here at all in any form, suddenly all the things that everybody's afraid of, you're just like, why? <laughs> not only that, not only you like, why, but you're like, oh, okay. I have compassion for you. You're focusing on that because you are suffering and you don't know that. And you are going to keep doing that until you realize that you don't have to do that anymore. And so beings like you and me and others have come to this place where we realize that there is a greater force expressing itself through us, to us, through us in all these different ways. And we're choosing to rise and meet it and to anchor it in. Yes. And share it. So <laughs> this is the best thing ever. It's like the greatest thing ever. And God, when we can get in that place, your fear goes away because you're like, no, no, all these people like doing terrible things. You know that you are here to bring a level of love and appreciation and frequency to it that others maybe aren't able to because they're stuck in it. So, 
Oh, you know what, what I felt like this, this huge um, confirmation in, in what you shared about how valuable our contribution in terms of vibration, how valuable it is. Sometimes, you know, like my work is focused on a lot of times on empowering mystical souls and light workers and visionaries to really bring their gifts to the world and lead their their legacy movements. And a lot, you know, a lot of times, um, I I I remind um, people how important is is their vibrational contribution right? How important it is, because sometimes people like, you know, like so discouraged when their big milestones don't happen fast enough, or they get, they they just, you know, it's so easy to get sucked into this race of the matrix. And it's kind of easy to forget that our coherent field, our experience of harmonious vibration does make a difference and does offset, you know, the negative the negative vibrations, right? So yeah, it's, it's, it's a, so encouraging that you brought awareness to that, that we actually changed our environment from, you know, expressing this harmonious vibration. Oh my God, I love it. And let's break that down even further because I think that'll help people really get, because there are a lot of people are talking about like, oh, vibration and raising your frequency. And some people think it's bypassing and some people, a lot of people don't know what it is. Part of that is because everybody's identified with things in a certain way that causes them to perceive reality through their own filters, right? And because you're used to perceiving things in a certain way, you kind of expect to keep perceiving them in that way, right? And so what that looks like, okay, when when we t- talk about empowerment versus disempowerment, right? Like most people are focusing on the world around them and they're allowing everything in the world external to them to affect their internal environment, right? And that's why they're afraid or stuck in survival or going through whatever it is they're going through. They're in these traumas. But when you realize that by getting into this vibratory state that we're talking about, you create a new environment within you that is actually in coherence with the great coherence because the universe is in a state of coherence. The solar system's in a coherence. The earth has a coherence. When we create internal coherence within our own bodies, we're supported by the greater coherent forces or natural law that exist in reality. So that's actually more real than these little dramas and everything that that everybody's temporarily addicted to. Now let's go into a little bit about vibratory frequency because that can be confusing to people and I'll I'll do my best to do justice to this topic. But if we were to let go of everything we think we know, let go of who we believe ourselves to be, let go of your name, just everything. You don't identify with anything external at all and you just breathe rhythmically and you calm down and you just feel a little bit of smile, like an internal smile and you you smile through your heart. You don't think about what it means, but you just feel grateful that you have this body and that it's working for you. Now let's look at what's happening. There's some kind of energy that's causing our heart to be. And usually I'll ask people like, you know, they'll be like, I don't believe in a higher force or God or this or that or what. And I'm like, okay, well, would you agree that your heart is beating? And they'd be like, well, yeah, obviously. And I'd say, okay, well, are you causing your heart to beat? And, you know, most people will be like, well, I can affect it. It's like, okay, you can affect it, but are you causing it? And they'll be like, well, no. And I'm like, okay, something. So then you would agree that there's some kind of force, some profound innate intelligence that not only is causing your heart to beat, but it's causing your entire autonomic nervous system to function often faster than the speed of light, right? Faster than the speed of sound. Fat. Like there is a full blown miracle happening inside of you. And that heartbeat is bioelectromagnetic. It is energy, it's frequency. And so when you take who you think you are 
And instead of focusing on things that keep reaffirming who you think you are, and you focus on this heart, the energy that's beating in it, you realize that there is a profound, I'll say this for me, there is a profound innate intelligence in my body that is way more intelligent than I am, <laughs> way more. And when I become aware of what it's actually doing in my body and I just pay attention to it, I'm like, oh my God, it's, you know, like it doesn't, the amount of awe and wonder is endless when you give your attention to this. But something unique begins to happen because that heartbeat is energy, it's frequency, ba bum ba bum ba bum right? Like it's beating. And so when you, when the mind quiets down and you focused on whatever this is, this pulse of life that's going through you, and you can get in a state of calm so that you can feel your pulse anywhere and everywhere in your body, you start to feel the energy that is actually allowing you to be conscious in the first place. And you realize that that is antecedent to your self-awareness, meaning there is some innate intelligence, divine force, you can call it, that is allowing us to have this temporary experience as these people we think we are. But everybody's just stuck in the person they think they are. So when you get back a little bit, you get into this field of energy that you truly are, you become aware of how incredible it actually is. And you keep surrendering deeper and deeper into it. And then all of a sudden, it realizes that you're paying attention to it. And it is like, oh my God, here you are. I love you. You're my child. I, I've been trying to get your attention the whole time. And you've been, you know, and that's okay that you've been doing that. But here I am. You're paying attention to me. Now I'm paying attention to you. Let's create. And that's really what it comes down to. Like when we exercise our creative faculties, no matter what it is, whether it's writing or singing or walking in the woods or talking with animals or whatever it is that we do, when we exercise that creative force within us, we create our own empowerment from the inside out and we override all of our past traumas and negative conditioning, all the things that we can get addicted to and stuck in. And this is kind of what it's like to raise your frequency and get beyond it because everything is energy and you're just shifting out of what you think things are to this great coherent force that everything actually is. <laughs> My heart smiles so wide right now. And, and for many reasons, of course, the, the, the divinity of expression that came through you and in such a very grounded way, you know, because I often bring this very, um, very Sufi flavor to my relationship with the universe. And I say, you know, this is my beloved. The universe is my cosmic tantric lover and my, my partner. And it's, you know, it has the face of divine mother for me. And that relationship was as a result of an opening of the heart eye at that center of a challenge, intelligence, right? This, this multidimensional portal of awareness. And in, there were definitely initiations preceding an opening of that intelligence, of the heart intelligence, right? And I just, I just love how what you share just gives that extra you know, it's like said in a different way and it's so grounding stuff and it's just amazing, amazing. That's exactly, you know, like when, when my heart opened to the Divine Mother as a feminine face of God, it was the biggest healing of my soul because it was like this divine romance that I knew was possible, but I was unplugged from it in a way right and it was like this reconnection of the circuitry 
And I began, and I began, I turn into an interface between the invisible world and the visible world. And then you have this very profound mystical experience. The divine intelligence is seeing through your eyes, operating through your hands, right? <laughs> so I want to take us there because, you know, when I tune into your energy field, I feel this deep nature mystic in you. And I sense your, um, you know, incredible levels of reverence that you have for nature, that you have for minerals and crystal kingdom and the plants. And, you know, this is just how you walk your path. I see it and it's profound. So what that, that path has taught you lately about your relationship with, with the divinity of nature and how it continues to initiate your heart awareness right now? So that's great. That's a great question. I mean, it's gotten to a point, like I said, like when you put everything into perspective, right? You realize like just where we are on this planet is surrounded by infinity like that we can't even imagine. It's just like, it, it, it's so, I mean, I'll speak for myself. Like I try to, I allow my energy to go and I do a lot of practices where I put my body to sleep and I keep my awareness awake and I literally explore the universe through all these glands, but that's another story. That's another thing we can get into, but even going deep, deep into these out of body, out of being experiences that are still encompassed within the being I still can't even imagine the depth and magnitude of what it is and every time I have a new breakthrough or an epiphany or revelation and I get like a download of like oh my god I you know it humbles me to the degree where it's like the more I find out or the more I know the more I find out I don't know and it's that feeling of like, there's so much more that inspires me to keep going out, to keep expanding outward. And it's, it's really that actually. So to kind of go back to your question, it's like, all, all there is is nature, right? Like all there is, is this, oop, it froze. Oh, but well, I still hear you. Oh. Okay, it came back right, perfect. <laughs> so, let me try to simplify this a little bit. For somebody who's stuck in the world, right? Who's stuck in this drama and everything that's going on. Everybody's so worried about artificial intelligence, right? And when you look at what's going on, like we've become very much a technological society, right? And it seems like AI seems so powerful and it's so strong, but organic intelligence, you could say, which is what, all of everything is birthed from initially that makes up the predominant bulk of all known and unknown reality times infinity. And this artificial element that everybody's so afraid of makes up such a small little bit of the organic intelligence in many ways, in many ways, artificial intelligence takes its own life by trying to mimic organic intelligence because it, it needs a model in order to develop and grow and expand. And what better model is there than one that's already been successful in its expansion, giving birth to galaxies and stars and supernovas and like, you know? So there's nothing but nature. It's beating in our chest. It's causing our heart, our lungs to breathe when we get into this state, this coherent internal state, and we sustain it and we anchor it, then suddenly nature comes alive through us. And we realize that we're not just these consumers that are here to buy all these things and participate in all this stuff. We are literally here to integrate this greater expansive reality, the soul, you could say, into the self. There's a massive soul self integration that's happening. And those of us who are 
open to it and facing it and allowing it to happen, even if it can be challenging, are the ones that are ushering in this for the ones who are not doing it or don't even know that it's happening. But it's gotten to the point now where this has been going on for so long, like this energy has been trying to get our attention for so long and we haven't really been paying attention that it's taken the entire world to essentially come to a standstill. Every, like you're all in prison at like, we're taking away everything. Could there be a better, more opportune time? Could there be any more of a clear sign from the universe saying, okay, we want you guys to just stay where you are, to relax, to go inward and cultivate intimacy with this force that you truly are, because that will allow you to experience a level of joy, of freedom, of expressive potentiality that we may have never known before on this planet. Wow. (laughs) Yeah, that's the kind of conversations that light me up, my dear community. Yeah, I'm just, you know, here with my inner circle on a Tuesday afternoon, Tuesday morning. This is our conversation Tuesday morning. It is, you know, Sav, what I love about this, it just reminds me, this reminds me of the ancient teachings. You know, when I went to Egypt before this whole uh, global global uh, thing happened, I went to Egypt and it was such a beautiful path of remembrance for me. And ancient Egyptians um, really were trained by Atlantean civilization and then Atlanteans were trained by Lemurians about the divinity of nature, how nature is divine. And, um, and it's, it's like the, to me was the same, you know, like when I was reading your book, how aware, uh, how aware you were as a little child of the energies of invisible world. I could really relate to that. It was very, very similar. I think a lot of star seeds and indigos have that level of remembrance and awareness. And then, for me, uh, tr- truly coming to awakening was to see the divinity of nature and to feel that alive relationship. I call it the great cosmic mother. You know, to me, nature is that that goddess, right? Like that divine goddess that is everything is the goddess, right? Yeah. So what a profound opportunity that we have just like you said, it's a great invitation to cultivate intimacy with that energy. So I also want to come back to what you said, sit and feel a smile, like feel your heart smile. It's just such a simple practice, but it does take you immediately to that coherence, right? Is there another practice that comes to you? I love sit and feel your heart smile. It's so simple. And anybody can do it, no matter what level of awareness, right? Exactly. And to add to that, slow rhythmic breathing with that smile. That's the key. Ah, slow rhythmic breathing. Because like almost think about like music, right? With like a beat, like you get into the flow and you're right into it. The heart is like that. And when you breathe, slow and rhythmically, like, you know, four or five seconds on an inhale, four or five seconds on an exhale, with that inner smile or an elevated sense of joy, whatever, you know, some people are like, I can't feel joy because they're suffering or whatever. And so I always say, well, just smile, a little inner smile. And they're like, oh yeah, I can, I feel something when I smile. I'm like, okay, then do that. But when you breathe rhythmically and slowly, and you have that inner smile, then you're you're creating an internal environment for this heart-brain coherence to start to connect. Because most of us are addicted, you could say, to a convergent focus, meaning we're addicted to this really tunnel vision, narrow view type of focus that causes us to focus on everything external. And there's nothing wrong with that, except for that we've become hyper obsessively addicted, you could say, or over focused on it to the degree that we're missing out on 
another level of focus, which is a divergent focus or an open focus. And so when you get into that breathing, that rhythmic breathing, the calm, and you're smiling inwardly, you stop focusing in that tunnel vision way. And you're, you just kind of relax, you know, you can feel your whole body relaxing. And at some point, if you keep breathing and you keep that rhythmic breathing up, the mind will slow down and your addiction to focusing on everything in front of you stops. And you start to feel this open focus where you become aware of your heartbeat the field of energy that is causing your heart to beat and how it's interacting with all the other systems of your body. And when you start to feel that and pay attention to it, it starts to pay attention to you, as we were saying before. And then a relationship begins to happen where you recognize like, wow, this is the relationship that I really wanted to be having you know, we think that our relationship with all things external is what we really want, right? Because the world tells us that if we have more money, if we have better things than cars, if we have the right partner, if we have all this stuff, then we'll be happy. But what this is saying is that we create happiness. We create joy, love, awe, inspiration. It, we create this from the inside out for no reason at all other than we are choosing to. We're not waiting for somebody or something to make us feel a certain way inside. We are choosing to feel this way. We're gonna create that internal environment that feels like that. And that is empowerment. And, it, and people will be like, oh, it's easy for you to say, like you have successful companies, you have this or that, and I'm like, well, you know, I had everything taken away from me at one point. I spent three years in prison, you know, like I was severely addicted to drugs. I went through all kinds of stuff mm -hmm. and I applied these very same techniques, these simple, just like realizing that who I think I am is very small compared to what I actually am, meaning this field that I am. But if I'm always focused on who I think I am, then I'm going to miss out on what I really am. And that just doesn't make sense, you know? So. Yeah. <laughs> so amazing. I love it. I love it. You know, I always find this deep affinity with very strong people, you know, like. <laughs> the strength of the soul and I think it's partially because I recognize the survivor in front of me but it's like it's surviving is one level but then you you springboard from what a lot of people would never survive and you springboard into this place of of magnificent thriving you know this co-creation with the quantum field and that's what I see in you and that's what I see in me you know it's like we springboard from such intense circumstances and you know but that's the true alchemy that's the alchemist that's the initiate consciousness in front of me you know where it doesn't matter what set of circumstances your higher self orchestrated for you to move through you know you tap into this inner reserves of power and connection with the field and you alchemize it and you know what all of it can be taken away again and doesn't matter because you're going to recreate and rebuild. And it's like the, it's like this, what I love about this stuff is the spider archetype for me. You know, when I look at the spider, it is the most incredible example of creativity. Like no matter what can tore apart a spider net, right. And you know, a human or a wind or a rock, it just continues to weave the new design, even more beautiful, even more intricate. And so it is with our lives. It's, it's, we're never defined by circumstances. It's that inner strength and inner power that is cultivated, that is created from within. Mm, I, yeah, that's like where true resiliency comes in, you know, and a lot, a lot of people who feel stuck and lost and are whatever, like, this is how people do it. Like, I, and this is what I love about you 
who is, I know a little bit about what you've gone through and coming to this country and everything. And oh my God, like you've had to go right through it and going through it and surrendering your resistance to what you fear the most allows you to face that fear in a way where it doesn't have that grip over you. You know, it's not about bypassing at all. Some people will be like, oh, this, it's like, no, it's the exact opposite. It's creating an internal state of being so that you can process the things that you weren't able to deal with before. Whereas before, because you weren't able to deal with it, you were internalizing your struggle. You were causing stress and chaos to happen to your organs, to your body, because you didn't know what to do, right? Everybody did that at a certain point or is doing that. And many across the world are, they're so stressed out and they're so worried because we're going into the unfamiliar, the unknown, and everything could change at every moment. And so they're just like, <gasps> they're freaking out, they're panicking. And it's like, stop, because that is not only not helping anything, but you're hurting yourself. And you're not only hurting yourself, you're not hurting your body, but you are. I mean, it's causing pain and stress and it's causing health symptoms to appear. And But you're missing out on the opportunity to face this stuff from a place where you can do what you said, alchemize it. So. Oh, Seth, I just, you know, like I am, I'm just in awe of how you walk your path and how you, how you serve, how you cultivate your consciousness. We have a few minutes left. I would love to hear what are you weaving into creation? You're such a creative being. You have amazing product, your amethyst, CBD drops, your water, your, you just release this phenomenal book. You know, there's, there's so many other things that you create that I don't know yet. Yes. So what are you creating? What is your creative baby right now? So my book is definitely something that I've been putting out there, but you know, that just helps people become acquainted with who I am and what I'm doing. But now we're doing all these events up here. Nice. And these events are amazing because it's bringing all different people with many different perspectives. It's weaving in music. Like I, for me, music is, I love to sing. Like I'm a, I'm a vocalist. I, it's Your funny. voice is like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. Okay, everyone, we gotta, you gotta Google Seth's musical clips. It's like a whole other persona that comes through. I was like, oh, that's your alter ego. Yeah, <laughs> Last week, uh, we did an event here and, you know, it's all atmospheric healing music and I'm doing throat singing to it. So I'm like doing all that stuff, right? And it's all healing. Everyone's like, oh, it's so beautiful. You know, we're just like taking people away and, you know, get, I got everybody into a state of coherence and we're trying to create group coherence because when you have a bunch of people creating a coherent field together, you know, Joe Dispenza is doing it on a mass level right now. He's literally showing that when you get hundreds or thousands of people together and everybody gets into a sustained state of heart, brain, whole body, whole soul coherence, they're having spontaneous remissions happen. Like boom, boom, boom. Like, so it feels like this is the antidote to where the world wants to go, you know, because so many people are afraid. So many people are lost, but the answer is right here. And so, <laughs> but anyway, we, by doing these things, by, by creating music and speaking and doing all this stuff, we're bringing this out in people. We're helping people connect to what it is that is truly happening inside of them. But it's funny. So we're doing all this, we're playing the music and then everyone's like, oh, and then I just said, I also sing in a heavy metal band in case everybody's starting and everybody just lost it and started laughing, you know? <laughs> yeah, 
yeah, it's like it's something that that you don't expect when you meet you, you know. <laughs> and by the way, there is also this side. Of, but that's like that's that's an example of wholeness. You have you're like this diamond with all these beautiful different sides. And it's yeah, that's the integration of all these aspects of yourself, like boof, expansion of your entire coherent field. Wow. So I just wanted to say like thank you so much this was a phenomenal conversation this is what happens this is what happens my community yep yep so tune in into this conversation one more time listen to these phenomenal insights and brilliance and practices and Seth's book flight to invite do you have the physical version yeah, here it is. Yeah, the cover is so initiation through the heart is the only way to win. And it's a phenomenal book. You just you're gonna like you're just gonna open it up and you're just gonna start diving in into this powerful storytelling and a beautiful wisdom. And I just want to say thank you. It was so fun, so fun. We'll do this again. Yes. And I just appreciate you. And I'm gonna put all the information how to, how you can connect to Seth and how you can cyber stalk him, listen to his <laughs> clips. <laughs> yeah, he's also very good looking and very, very fit. So ladies and gentlemen, cyber stalk this man and listen to what he says and what he teaches and just how you walk this path of embodiment. This was fantastic. Thank oh, you. And until next. Yeah. Yeah.